Welcome to Pipes Around the House. In this video, I'm going to show you how to securely fit a folding TV stand to a solid masonry wall. And throughout the video, I'll show you the products and the tools that are used to successfully complete this task. So this is the TV bracket that I'm using, and this bit needs to be secured to the wall. And this part of the TV bracket is already attached to my TV as it's been in use previously. But to attach this to the TV, you simply take the spacers and the screws supplied with your particular TV, place them through the forearms on the bracket and secure them into the back of your TV using a screwdriver rotating clockwise. If we take a closer look at this part of the bracket, it's got this slightly lip section that slots into the other bracket that's already attached to the TV. But we'll come to that later. Now in order to get the TV in the right position on the wall, I'm going to make a datum point on the TV. This can be anywhere you want, but for me, I'm going to take the centre. So using a measuring tape, I work out the length of the TV, divide it by two, and I mark a point in the centre of the TV. So now we need to hold the TV up to the wall to mark our datum point on the wall. Now if you have got someone to help, then this would be preferable. I haven't, so I've got to do it on my own. But once the TV is positioned exactly where I want it, I mark the point from the centre and the top of the TV onto the wall. Now we need to place the two parts of the bracket together and once in position I need to measure from the centre top down and then across to the centre point between these two holes. And that means when this bracket is in situ on the wall it will hold the TV perfectly central in the position I want it. So I'm just going to quickly remove these two screws to allow me to fit the two parts of the bracket together. We'll need to refit these screws in a minute as they will hold the two parts of the stand together preventing the TV from falling off the stand. Then I need to place this section of the bracket into the part of the bracket attached to the TV. So my first measurement is 75 millimeters off center. I write that down so not to forget. My next measurement is 18 centimeters from the top of the TV. And don't forget the way we've taken our measurements that the fixing holes and bracket is offset to the left. When we flip it around to fit on the wall, they'll be offset to the right. So now starting at my datum point on the wall, I can measure 75 millimeters to the right and 180 millimeters or 18 centimeters down and then mark another point. And just to be sure, I go back using a spirit level, ensuring my measurements are perfectly square to each other and make my final mark with a pencil. So that mark by there now represents the top and center of this metal bracket. So using a spirit level, I draw a short level line on my new point. Then I remove the plastic cover off the TV bracket, hold it up against the line I've just drawn. I can now mark through the holes in the TV bracket ready for drilling. We now have three marks to drill our holes. So I've chosen to use these Fisher SX 10x50 wall plugs. And what I really like with these plugs is it tells you on the box exactly what size screw is compatible with the plug. You can see here it'll take a 6 to 8 millimeter diameter screw. It also tells you what size drill bit you need to drill the hole for the plug. And in this case, it's a 10 millimeter masonry drill bit. I'm using these M8 by 50 millimeter coach screws. And the M8 just means they're 8 millimeters in diameter. And the 50 millimeters means they're 50 millimeters in length. And the reason I'm using coach screws is they've got a nice large flat solid head which unlike Phillips or posi drive screws which are prone to rounding off these provide a really good solid fixing when using a socket and an impact driver to tighten them up and I use the M8 coach screw because it was the largest diameter screw that I could comfortably fit through the holes in the bracket and with three of these screws this bracket's going nowhere so if we look back on the box of the wall plugs it even tells you how deep to drill your hole and on here it says 70 millimeters deep so now I'm going to use my Makita SDS drill starting it on just the drill function with a slightly smaller drill bit I'm just using a five millimeter diameter to drill a bit to make a clean entry into the wall. I'm also using my Henry Hoover to catch any dust. I'll then turn it on to hammer action to drive it into the wall to 70 millimeters deep. The only reason I use a smaller drill bit first is my house is a Victorian house, the brick is very old and the plaster has a tendency to fall out if I go straight in with a large drill bit. So whilst this is an essential, it does prevent plaster from falling out of my wall in large chunks and making a mess all over the floor. So when I push my drill bit into the hole and pull it back out again, mark it with my finger, I can see whether I've gone 70 millimeters deep. Because I do this regularly, I'm comfortable doing it this way. However, I've done some other really detailed videos on how to use wall plugs with tips and tricks. A link to those videos will pop up on the screen now and I'll put links to those videos in the description section below. So please go and check them out. So once I drill my small holes, I now replace the drill bit with a 10mm drill bit, which is the one we need for the wall plugs, and repeat the process. Now taking the wall plugs I showed you earlier, we place them into the holes by hand and then finish them off gently with a hammer until the plugs sit flush with the wall. So now we need to fix the brackets of the wall using the coach screws and to do this you could use a wrench like this or a socket or in my case I'm going to use an impact driver with a socket bit. This socket bit came from my Makita 60 piece set and I'll put links to all the tools and products I use in the description section below. So now I place the coach screws through the holes in the stand and locate them into the plugs in the wall. 
Then using my impact driver and socket bit, I drive the screws into the wall one by one, but not fully tight. This allows a bit of movement in the bracket to make some final adjustments before finally tightening up. When using an impact driver, just be careful not to over tighten. Then I place the plastic cover back over the bracket. So now when we go back to the bracket and take a look, the middle of this section that holds the TV is exactly in line with the mark I made earlier on the wall. So the TV should sit perfectly central, which is exactly how I wanted it. Now we have to hook this bit of the bracket on the TV, over this bit of the bracket that's on the wall. Now at this point it's useful to have someone to help you put this into place as the TV can still potentially fall off the stand but if you're on your own you just have to wing it like me. Then taking the screws that I removed at the start of the video I need to screw these back in which will secure the TV to the bracket and stop it falling off but don't tighten these up just yet as we can use a spirit level in a minute to level up the TV before fully tightening. And you can see by gently tilting the TV up and down, the bracket will move. Once level, we can tighten up one of the screws. And now we can go back and finish up tightening the other. And taking a closer look at the two screws, you can see it holds the two parts of the stand together, preventing the TV from lifting up and off this bit of the stand. So the TV is now firmly secured to the stand. If you want to tilt the TV forwards and backwards, you can now loosen this screw and the one on the other side, tilt the TV to your required position, and then tighten back up. You'll notice a small hook by here. This is just to carry the cable to the TV to stop it hanging down. And in my case, you're going to have to apply some trunking to the wall to carry the cable down to the skirting board. But that's something for another video. Now I can fold the stand up and push the TV back against the wall and then finally remove the grubby prints from the pesky kids. So that's it, job done. Now if you're interested in any of the tools or the products I used in this video, I'll put links to those in the description section below. If you found this video useful, then please give it a like. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel and press that bell icon for regular notifications. I've been Pouse Around the House. Ta-ta, farewell. <laughs>